So we got some cutting outing to do. Now, like the arrow, I could use the old hobby knife, but I don't think so because these have a lot of curves and a lot of different uh, kind of angles, so it's not just straight cuts. And using the old scissors, I've already started here. I'm going to try and cut these as flush as possible. I don't want any white showing. And you know, you can see there's a lot of curvature here. So, got a lot of work to do. Tell you what, start with the logo. Might just come in from this angle here. Just take our time. Work it out. So, so far, this is what we got. I'm trying to keep those edges as clean as possible. We still got some stuff showing here. And every now and then, I just kind of deviate from the logo and just start getting out the. Uh, I don't know, orange lightning bolts? <laughs> they look kind of like lightning bolts to me. Fire, fire lightning bolts. Electrified fire. These little extensions right here. Figure out how they're supposed to go on the... Um, the fins are supposed to go with the uh, lightning bolts. The lightning bolts of fire and power. I got a little bit of white showing. So we can come in and snip that off. It'll be clear anyways, but I just wanted to make sure it's as flush as possible. Been working at this for a while. I have found that my purple scissors do better than my blue scissors. I've been uh, working kind of big to small. It seems better for me to kind of just cut out the rough like this and then just go back in and then cut more flush um, like here I'll I'll cut down this way that way because I'm trying not to wrinkle up any of the decals and you know like see right there I'm trying to kind of get that to fold under and just paying attention to whether I'm wrinkling them up or not. See, like here, I didn't realize it looks like I had some wrinkles, but that might not be a big deal. I hope not. Big, big sheet of decals can have its own problems just because it's so big. And I also found that if I can kind of lay it flat on the table like this, instead of trying to hold it up, that can help cut. I could have even just went ahead and cut that flush while I was doing that, but I'm thinking it's better to just go ahead and just cut these smaller so I have smaller pieces to work with but we are almost done 
See, and I got that long piece, and I'll cut this here and then go from there. I did get the logo cut out. About as clean and flush as I can get that. And next stop, I believe we're going to be putting them on. Well, there it is in its glory. It's been a couple days, almost a week. We're all dried, cured, and getting some decals on there. And this is our problem right now. These decals are giving me an absolutely horrendous time. Every time I peel the backing off, the sticky comes off with it in like little globs. And you might be, see there? Right there on the edge, right there. Like this right here. Right here. That, uh, that's part of the sticky that stretched off because it's like delaminating from the decal itself. I don't know what's going on with that. It, whether I'm getting it too wet before I'm dipping it. Because I usually I like to wet my fingers first before I dip it into the water and detergent. Um, I keep my fingers wet and then I try to start to peel it. But I did try and do one dry. And it still did the same thing. So I don't know what's going on there. And the other thing that is just absolutely blowing my mind right now. Um, I don't know if this is a common thing. I don't know if you guys have had this issue or if it's a known issue. The fin decals are symmetrical, correct? Am I correct? Well, even looking back in the footage of when I did the decals and looking at the decal sheet, I even looked it up online. Guys... These decals are not symmetrical. They're all the same. And if I was to try to... The, the, the lightning bolt and the, um, the addition to it, the extension, I don't know, the triangle, claw. Okay, all these are exactly the same shape. And guys, I have tried to make sense of it. The only way I'd get it to shape like that is if I turned it upside down like this. And then it would then it would kind of come to that, that shape that I want. So you tell me, is, is it, or do we have some misprints going on here? Or what? Now I really want to get this done and I'm, you know, I don't want to whine and moan and groan, but I'm going to have to do some digging and see if anybody else has had this issue. Because I, I even looked up some old old school decal sheets. And they were symmetrical in the old school ones, the older ones. So, because I've looked at these a hundred times, and I'm telling you right now, they are not symmetrical. Mirrored symmetrical. They're all exactly the same. So, they, they only go on this fin here correctly. So, I'm going to do some digging. Maybe I can find something out for you. But other than that, I don't know if I'm going to put the decals on this side. I might just do it on this side only. And then put the, the logo on. Because the logo looks just fine. So, But with, the, with the, the sticky not sticking like it should, coming up off the, the decal itself and globbing up, boogering up, it's, it's very odd like it's a bad batch or, I don't know. It's totally different from the arrow. So here's an update. Yeah, they're not symmetrical. They're definitely not. Um, I actually have attempted to put, do something with the other ones because it kind of fits on this side, even though yeah, it's it's not it's not curling like this like it should. And I'm probably wouldn't even uh, attempt to put something here. I mean, they can maybe kind of look all right. Maybe if I did something like this. But the, the real concern is that this is like a bad batch of decals or something because I know that's not me. It, that right there, is this a string? All this right here will probably peel up right now. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, I don't know if that's, because I'm not, I'm not dipping 
the entire thing in the water. Okay, I'm peeling the back and then I'm dipping it in there. So I don't know, you know what? I don't know if the adhesive, I might have to redo this whole entire decals anyways, but they're not symmetrical, so that it does bother the living piss out of me. But I don't know if that glue is coming from the backing or not. Maybe. But it, it doesn't seem sticky. And the ones that I have done, like this this tip right here is not, not sticking down like it should. Come on now, get you focused in there. See, it's just not laying down like it should. And there, that's why I was wanting to make sure that they definitely got uh, cut flush as possible. Because of that right there, it's sticking off the tip right there, off the um, trailing edge. So that's where we are right now. And I might just do these without the spike, the claw, triangle. I don't know what you want to call that. It's um kind of disappointing. And I'm disappointed that I'm showing you guys this. But this is a live and learn moment. Um, that maybe sometimes it just doesn't go to plan and it might not be your fault. So that's that and I'm um, thinking I'll I'll go ahead and continue to put the decals on I'll show you at least one and maybe I'll show you what I'm talking about with the sticky and we got to get the piston in which is fitting now by the way and the shot cord and that's it we're ready to fly all right so let's take a break from this disaster of a decal job and uh, get this shot cord attached now I want to uh, let everybody know that the piston and stuff is fitting a lot better now. And the nose cone is just going in real smooth. I mean, that's just that's as smooth as I can be. I didn't even I didn't even sand the shoulder at all. <laughs> I I'm just gonna leave that like that for now. I might paint it one day, but it's whatever. So what I did was to finally get the piston to fit and the nose cone to fit. When I wet sanded this. I kind of made a dumb dumb thing, dumb dumb move, and kind of put it back down on, on the wet table. And all this edge right here kind of swelled up a little bit, and that's what was causing me a lot of problems. And I didn't realize that. So I'm sanding, sanding, sanding on the on the piston, and uh, the nose cone's not fitting, and what's going on here? So I just chamfered it again, because I really look, took a good look at it. And I just took my hobby knife, the metal end right here, and just... Went around it, around it, around it, up and down, up and down, and just, and then kept on trying it, and now we're fitting. Let's see if I'm full of doo doo. One hand come right out. That's that's as loose as it's been, okay. And it is ultra smooth, especially with that primer. And there's barely any wiggle, but it's just smooth. That's that's, I think it's been worth. Uh, priming it and then sanding it just uh don't 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 make a dumb dumb move and get this swollen on you cardboard not fiberglass wet water bad so i got just a little bit of 30 minute epoxy mixed up now i had to make the decision okay as far as my ejection goes my my shot cord that i'm trying not to stomp all over you can see a little bit more of my messy workshop here my my decision to keep this or not because I know this is going to get filthy and dirty and filled up with crud and I'm not going to be able to get it out if I epoxy that in there that's probably why they do not want you to epoxy that in there so I've been playing with the idea of getting rid of it or not but I think I'm going to keep it just because kind of keep it original plus it has something to do with the way this ejects so also I don't want my shot cord to burn up as bad because I am keeping it the elastic I could put wadding or dog bar for a Nomex um, protector in there under the piston but I'm just gonna just keep this for now and I'll, I'll figure out a way to clean it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some epoxy on the uh, the threads of the screw here kind of doing this all in 
off camera, but I'll talk you through it and I'll show you what I, at least attempt to show you what I've been doing. I didn't make a whole lot of epoxy. I don't think it's going to need a whole lot. This just really has to hold up for my cert flight. That's really it. I mean, I'd love to fly this rocket a hundred more times, but it really just needs to survive this, this particular flight. And then we'll worry about the rest. So I'm putting it on the threads up under that blast disc, the fuser disc, whatever the actual name of it is. And then I'm going to put some on the, the threads themselves to thread it into the baffle. I'm sure you guys are getting a really great view of that there baffle. I didn't plan this. Um, working one-handed. <laughs> I'm trying to mix and get it in there at the same time. Yep. If I was to build this differently, I would not do this. But I do have a G-Force now. And I'm thinking I'm going to set that up for being able to put eyes in that bad boy. So I'm going to get, see I got everything epoxied, glued. And now I'm just going to go ahead and thread it out down, down on in there. Alright, so I've got that in there. I made sure that the shock cord, see it's all twisted up for me, twisted it in there. I made sure that shock cord didn't touch none of that epoxy. So I'm going to leave it set just like this for at least... 30 minutes to an hour, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the um, the piston and the buckles and all that together, and the nose cone, I'm going to attach the nose cone, and we might be able to go outside and do a little testy test with my shop vac in reverse. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I went ahead and put one of the uh, buckles on. It says six foot from the end of the airframe, so it's about six foot or so. And this one's the one that likes to slide a lot. So what I literally did was just take some masking tape, I don't know, about two, two and a half inches, wrapped it around, pulled it, all right, I pulled it up under there, right? And then closed it so it has a little bit extra thickness to bite onto. Doing this one-handed. Yeah, I've tried to pull that and it's not sliding. Even if I did it like that, just with one hand, stretch it like that, it would have been sliding all over the place. So I'm thinking that's going to be a win for now. Now I just got to do the other one. And well, I got to get the piston on to do the other one. All right, so I got the piston through and it's just sitting on top. Okay. That's how I got it sitting up against that buckle. Pistons back off. I totally forgot to put it through that little slot right there on the bottom. Now I've got the other one fed through. And I'm just going to snug it up against there. Yep, you just mirror it. And it says about an inch, maybe an inch and a half from that plate right there. So six foot from the rocket, up under, and about an inch with this buckle. Now this buckle is the one that's more snug. So I don't even think that I'm going to put any tape with that one because it's actually pretty snug, almost as snug as the one on the bottom there. And I've got them literally facing mirrored. Like that one's facing like that and that one's facing like that. Now this step's going to be totally optional. And it says about a foot down, which you already know that's going to be about here. But I'm going to go down a little bit further probably to like right about here because I'm going to make a dropper loop and I'm going to add a quick link one of these ever built from Home Depot 480 pounds stainless 1 8 inch quick link so I'm gonna make a dropper look put put this here for the parachute <laughs> and I've got something to tell you guys here in a second y'all gonna want to smack me something I found out about the decals so we're gonna make a dropper loop this is the end that's gonna go to the nose cone this is the same loop that I used for the arrow I'm going to make a loop. Now this is kind of wide, kind of fat. So it might be a little complex. I don't need a really big loop, but I'm just literally just going to go in and out a couple times. Probably about five times. One. Two. Three. Four, five, and this is looking hideous right now. Not making any sense, probably. And it's it, it, it ain't because it's 
because it's such a wide thing there. So here's here's the bottom of the loop. So these ain't looped up so good, but it'll still make sense here in a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the bottom. You can always refer to my the end of my arrow paint and finish video for a clearer explanation, but I'm gonna bring this bottom up through this little split right here in one of the loops that we made. Okay. I'll bring this up, and I don't need it that big, just enough for the quick link. And we're gonna cinch it down. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on this a little bit, just to kind of keep pulling it out to the size I want. And if it's still not the size I want, then I'll totally redo this, because I, I still can right now, but we're gonna pull it tight to where it's, you kind of can't. So uh, now I'm just gonna pull this way, this way and this way. I'm still gonna make sure that this stays out where I want it. I can even probably put my thumb there like that. And I'm gonna tell you, this may or may not work out. Well, no, I know this will. I know this will, I know this will. Look at there. So we got us a little dropper loop right here, which is a totally optional step. It's just for the convenience of being able to switch out parachutes or whatever we might need. But that is cinched down, even though this is not the prettiest. And I can still pull on this a little bit and increase that size. It's pulling, pulling. And I pull it back down, cinch it down a little bit. It's not as pretty as like a smaller, thinner line instead of such a wide band. So this going to keep pulling. Yep. So that's about how it's going to be. And there's probably other better techniques and better knots, but I think this is going to work. And but we'll find out. That's for sure. That's for sure, dude. We'll find out if that's going to work or not. So quick link in here. 480 pounds should be fine. I don't think it's going to do some weird stuff to the weight of the rocket. I don't. I don't think. I mean that loop can even be some way smaller, but I'm going to put the parachute here next. 42 inch big honking parachute. That yellow tech arrow, or that yellow. Wow, what did I say? Yellow tech. The the arrow tech yellow parachute. This is like the same one that the arrow has, just bigger. 42 inch. I think the arrows was 24. So I can't even get this on screen. This 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 is big. This is a big parachute for me. And they only get bigger from here. So what are we going to do? Well, I mean, these shrouds, wow. These shrouds are almost as, I'm holding my arm up to the ceiling. And they're dangling like a big yellow jellyfish. So just like we do with the smaller parachutes, I'm going to try to even up these shroud lines. Bring it to, I'm literally got my arm stretched all the way out. Okay, now. We're going to do it like we do with the smaller parachutes. At least I think. Had a technical difficulty there for a second. So I've got that linked on. And we're just going to loop it through like we usually do. And I don't think that's going to be an issue. This isn't a giant level 3 rocket. <laughs> technical difficulties. Stand by. Okay, sometimes I really do live up to the name Half Aft Rocketry, okay? I'm trying to loop this through like it's a swivel. And that's just not going to work. It just keeps coming undone. And I thought about heat shrink tubing or something to that effect. But, uh, shoot, why not? Let's just, let's just screw it up and go with masking tape for our level one, huh? How about you? Let's just, I got this pinched to where, where I want it. I'm just going to roll this up. Heat shrink tubing would probably be a lot better for this. Let's see if this is going to slide around on me. only got like less than 48 hours to get this thing ready so yeah I might be doing a little bit of silly stuff here no worries it's not the end of the world if we don't get it or not
it's all part of the fun just trying at least I'll tell myself that so that looks like it's looped and it's sliding so this this tape is not uh, <laughs> not gonna work for this I don't think this isn't the right no and when I can't find stuff I swear I just had that stuff my heat shriek tubing not too long ago and it's gone now so I got to get this off it's not the end of the world not yet not yet but I got another idea up my sleeve whether it's a good one or a bad one because you know I might even just do away with the quick link altogether at this point I could I might actually I could I could just attach these shroud lines directly to the shot cord but I think I'm just gonna do something a lot more simple if I still want to use the quick link yeah I could just probably just loop it around that loop okay bring it back to a point do all that again that there it's probably easier with this off got everything to a point what if I just do a simple loop knot Before I cinch that down, I just got to make sure that everything's still pretty even. I, want to, I don't want that loop too big. Make sure that the parachute's still coming to a point. I can't really show you any of this because it's just so big. So now I'm just kind of pulling everything tight. You know, that is an elastic shark shot cord, and that is kind of a good thing because... There's not going to be too much stresses on everything that I don't want stresses on. I don't like stress. Do you like stress? I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's going to be about as good as it's going to get. This could be an absolute stupid idea. If you've ever done something like this, been there, done that, let me know. Because I'm going to find out to this weekend whether this is a dumb idea or not. And it could very well be. We are attached. Either way, if that if something happens here, I still, you know, got it attached somewhere. Now, nose comb. I'm just going to tie directly to the nose comb. How I've been doing it. I could just cinch it down with two two loops. Even do a loop knot, do 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 do. But I like doing my fisherman's loop knot. Even with a big old thick shot cord like this, it should still be about the same. I already did it to the to the baffle and the motor mount. It's almost kind of confusing because it is so wide, you kind of can't really see what you're doing. I'm sure you guys can't tell what the heck I'm doing. A lot of this might not even make it in the final video. This might be outtakes. I might have a first outtake video. I don't know. You know how many times I fart off camera or on camera and I have to edit that out? I figure I just let you guys know. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not above fart jokes. Oh no 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 no. Just so you guys know that. And I will even put a knot right here for extra snags. Or just a stopper knot. to stop me from doing stupid stuff.
There we go. We are now attached. We are now ready. So we're outside with the sumo. We're gonna see if we can get uh, that to pop out with the uh, vacuum in reverse. Now it worked before, but not all packed up. And that uh, was before I did all the extra work with the priming and stuff. So let's see if this still works. Okay, let's see if this works out. Maybe I can just kind of hold it like this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hose and literally put it like that and see if it'll launch out. I think we got a winner. I think we are ready. We are ready. This is it. This is the end. So, you can see that's a pretty long shot cord too. So, this is actually the conclusion of this build. Painted, except for the decals, which I'm going to tell you right now. Um, there's a problem, but it, I'm kind of the problem. Okay, I lied. I have to make an edit. It's not the conclusion of the build yet. I still got to put the retainer on. Unless we're going to friction fit. How about a little bit of yin and yang for you? Some JB Weld. See if I can get you a decent angle here. Get our yin and yang mixed up. It looks even enough. We'll see about the color. Got like a lightish gray. What we want. Didn't need a whole lot. Probably a little something like that. You'll need at least 24 hours. Because that's what I keep hearing for JB Weld. You want at least 24 hours. Let's see if I can get in here and just paint. Well, actually, I need to do a test fit. So I haven't done one in a while. And yeah, we did all that painting. And I'm going to do some quick sanding. Love how this build's going. Because that's how you do it. You wait till the last second after you already mixed up your JB Weld. To put your, to do the final bit of sanding that you're going to need. Put it on the outside, just like this, and make sure that you that none of nothing gets in the motor tube or gets on the threads of the retainer. That's all we want to do. And I could probably still got plenty left. Usually, I'll have another rocket that needs the retainer to go on as well. But I've been slacking. I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you. Should I tell you? I still got other stuff that I need to put retainers on, but I'm not doing it right now because I'm not focusing on this because I need to get my certification build. I've been screwing up so bad. I'm screwing up the editing on this. I thought we were done. We're not. So I had to redo how I'm going to edit this towards the end. Okay. Okay. You got any in here? I don't think so. JB Weld, heat resistant, steel reinforced epoxy basically, same stuff, but just steel reinforced, and we were just fitting, don't you lie to me. Don't you lie to me, because I know that we were just fitting, there we go, that's why, we're going on crooked. I'm just going to, I know that that's sitting flush. I can get you in there. So, anyway, hands free. I know that that's sitting flush. And I'm just going to, you know, twist it, twist it, twist it. 
this is definitely set in flush and I don't see anything on the threads here either I might get nothing on my hands I'm not seeing nothing up under here and I put more than I did on my previous builds so if I wanted to do another I would I'd put the um, the retaining cap on there ring what is it called? I don't know what anything's called anymore. And we already know it's going to fit with the engine in there, so because it's sticking out so far. I just hope it's not sticking too far that way, and all this is going to burn up. That would be hilarious and entertaining. So... Now we just need some time. Oh, I keep thinking that little that little dart right there keeps messing with me. That's just primer. All the way back when we primed it, I know that the motor will fit in here. And I know that this is properly mixed if this hardens up. So that'll be my test. If that does not harden up, then I know that this is all screwed up that's in here. So I'll have to wait to see how that does. Now back to the regular scheduled program. But you can click off of this video right now. I've got kind of like a epilogue over time stuff to discuss with you guys, especially with the decals and what we're going to be doing. So... If you're clicking off now, I'll see you next time. But if you want to stick around, I still got some more left in this video for you. First and foremost, this build has been absolutely crazy. In a lot of ways, it's been easy. I made it more complicated in, in a lot of different ways. You know, with the fillets on the fins and the paint. And, you know, I've got a lot more learning to do on how to mask. I've got that glued in there. And I don't know, um, this is going to be my certification um, rocket, at least an attempt. Uh, however you guys might feel about a, a sumo kit for a level 1 rocket, whether you consider an actual level 1 kit or not, or kind of a wannabe level 1 kit, yeah. I think that we'll be okay, at least give it a shot. And uh, I'm going to document it as best as I can, and... I will be making a video of that. I've got to still assemble my uh, 29 by 180 uh, H128, which is what I'm going to be going with. So that's projected to go about, I think, 2,000 feet. That's what I said. What I keep seeing, and I just got to figure out what the delay is going to be on that. And I'm going to do a whole video on that as well, on how to do the um, engine. And I'm talking to you guys like I've done it before, and I've never done it before. We will get to that but first off you guys ain't gonna believe what's the deal with these decals and I'm going to show you right now take a minute to look at that these are water slide these are not just peel and stick <laughs> check that out now, there's still the issue with them not being symmetrical, but they are water slide, pretty much. Read your instructions. Read your instructions. That goes for me, too. Okay, let's get these decals done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, are these symmetrical? Good question. So, what I've gathered is that... It doesn't matter because it just seems to it like when it's when, when you wet them, peel them, and then apply them, it just kind of adheres to the to the surface. Now I don't know if basically that's assuming that you're going to clear coat, but this does seem pretty stuck on there, pretty flat. So they are symmetrical. It doesn't matter what side you put them on. So. What we do with these, you take your lightning bolt, put them in your liquid. And I've been leaving them in there in the claw 
I've been leaving them in there for about a minute or two. They don't slide off like Estes water slide decals. They don't do that. You still have to peel them, but after about a minute or two, they start to see how it's curling up a little bit. They start to curl up and the edges on the white will darken up. And I still might be doing this wrong, but that actually went by pretty good. And if I had been doing this the whole entire time, this decal job probably wouldn't be as botched. But I'm just going to go ahead and be positive and call it custom. So we'll wait for this to get done soaking and we'll start applying. Fortunately, this is the best looking side and that's actually where the logo is going to go. I just got it kind of mocked up right there. So you can see how I did that one. So that's my custom job and that's the good side. So you can do what you want. Hey, go wild with it. You got Giblet the helper. Giblet, my little helper, my little stinker. See how the edges are starting to kind of change color, like that darker looking color. And they're all curled up. I just kind of maybe might put them back and forth like that. Because, um, yes, this one you can actually see really good. But, you know, I try to slide them off and that's not happening so I still have to peel them off but these I'd say when they start looking like that I think they're ready and I really I'm assuming that they're assuming that you're gonna clear coat it but it doesn't seem like there's really an adhesive side okay so after we do all our prep make sure our hands are clean washed there's no oil we didn't scratch our knees wherever our grease is wet what we're gonna apply to so far, even though I think I figured these decals out, I'm still uh, I'm still not um, I'm not sold on these style. I think I the arrows did have an adhesive backing, so once it dries, it just stuck right on there, and they were symmetrical mirrored decals. So you, that goop is actually the adhesive for that white part. I did not know that, but now I know that. And there should be no goop on here. And even probably while I'm peeling it, I could probably still have it dunked on the water. Just in case. There should be, these should be coming out just semi-transparent, like plastic. And the side, the side that the, um, the adhesive was on it does feel like it's got like a little bit of a sliminess to it but then that changes that feeling changes because then when I feel the other side you kind of can't tell it seems so I don't know just odd and I'm new to these decals but I'm definitely not sold on them try to get these lined up I've been having issues with the tips sticking out too far So, like how we usually do, get this one. I'll just go ahead and do this while this is all still wet. I've been drying it and then putting the claw on. There's no, there's no goop coming off. You can see it stri stringing on the edge right there. I don't know if that got it on camera. I uh, still dunk it again. I'm thinking like right about here. I'm literally like looking off camera onto the instructions. So right about where they should be lined up or wherever I feel they should be lined up to. So then once we get them how we want them just start dabbing drying this technically this would be the adhesive side so I'll get these um I'll get these dried and I'm um, this thing is done 
I can't think of nothing else to do with this rocket except get the motor ready and get it on the pad. This build has taken me way too long. Um, it's definitely been a unique experience and I hope that you guys will learn what to do and what not to do from this should you choose to build you a sumo or however you choose to build your sumo custom or exact to the instructions but if these decals cause an issue like when it's flying up off the pad and they rip off and they mess with the aerodynamics create unnecessary drag and throw this thing off course and it does a nosedive and crashes six feet into the ground well then that would be entirely my problem and my fault because I'm not going to do clear coat I don't trust clear coat yet I've seen people just have way too many problems with it I'm, I'm not saying I'll never ever ever do it but I'm just not doing it yet until I decide well I'm ready to give clear coat a try I've gotten better at painting even though this paint job isn't the best I just gotta learn better masking techniques alright so you guys get the the idea for that this is all dry and I'll, and I'll monitor it make sure that everything's still sometimes I'll take my fingernail and I'll just kinda of squeegee the edges and sometimes a little bit of water will still come out and the other side I'm, should be um, sticking to it just like this so even though technically this would be the adhesive side but I, I really I don't really think there is an adhesive so I would probably recommend clear coating if you're if you're comfortable with doing so but I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna risk that Get the logo put in there I'm not done putting the decals on the fins but you guys get the idea There, if this is this isn't considered water slide, but I, I would actually prefer water slide. I'm not I'm not filling these decals at least this this way, but maybe they're good if you're gonna do clear coat. So see how look how much that cl that curled up, that curled up like wow. So I'm gonna have to keep rotating it and stuff like that. It's been in there for about a minute, and it really really curled up and it's got like a wrinkle going down right here it's not trying to separate so I'm gonna give it a little bit well actually right there it's it's separating I think that's kinda of coming off that's what that wrinkle is see I can see it split so that's good that's what we want and it doesn't matter which way you put it you put you know going that way or that way I'm actually gonna do it this way cuz that just feels like that's the way it's supposed to go to me it just feels right but that's if that's wrong to you then do it do it that way all right so I got this wiped down the rail guides are on this side that's technically the ugly side <laughs> but uh, it's kind of all whatever but I like yeah, guys hey look let's not be let's not be negative okay I'm gonna try not to be negative a little bit disappointed here and there but it's it's I'm learning we're, we're learning I'm still going to show you all my mistakes because that way you guys don't I'll save you that trouble that you don't do the same things or do it differently whatever works for you that's what I'm doing these videos for and just having fun so let's see if we get any goop on here fuzz there ain't no fuzz getting on there I definitely want the logo to go on good. I'm not seeing any sticky. It looks like it's separated. And it was in there for about, I don't know, two minutes. Maybe two and a half. So I feel the sticky. I do feel sticky. Like here, this is actually sticking to my hand a little bit. Nope. 
Was this supposed to stay there? For the... Was the white supposed to stay on there? Because that's like transparent. Wow. So this is how mine's going to look. Didn't think about that. I'm still probably doing this wrong. Guys, if you've ever done this, if you've ever done that, if you've ever built a sumo and you've used these decals, please write me a comment and let me know what in the world's going on here, what you're supposed to actually do. But you guys are seeing the results I'm getting it, getting from how I'm doing it. So mine is definitely a custom job. I don't... Yeah, that's sticky. But this... Maybe I wasn't supposed to wet this one. Maybe you're not supposed to wet this part. Keep the white on there. And peel it. And the sticky should stay on this. And the white. I, I, I don't... I don't. Uh, wow. I don't know. Odd. Mm. But... Hey, let's just say I like the way this looks. Like actually, it's kind of interesting. I mean, we weren't, we weren't supposed to paint this white. We we're supposed to do an outline of white. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. Well, this is actually the conclusion of this sumo build you guys can click off now if you haven't already because this is i think we're going on like a three hour long video here now three hours and i'm probably going to cut this in the parts and this also kind of concludes like my season one this is kind of the first batch of builds that i've done for this channel and this one has so far been not my favorite could it have been worse? Absolutely. Absolutely. This could have been an absolute dumpster job. Throw it in the dumpster. But we're not there yet. Takeaways. Takeaways from this video is... Peel the sandpaper off the piston. Primer it, sand it if you want. But at least primer or paint, peel that paper off. All right. Make sure that you're that you follow the directions. Read the directions. You see how the decals have worked out. Don't do CA fillets. I don't recommend it. You can maybe epoxy or just don't do anything. Keep it keep it how it would look without it. The aft end. Make sure you follow the measurements. Don't don't have it too far up this way. The motor. Okay, it's, it's it's sitting a little bit farther this way, and that might throw off the stability. And I don't have as much room for my laundry, the parachute, and everything. So it should be facing farther over like this. It should be sticking out more. That's really about it. All right. So the next thing that you guys are going to see is that I'm going to be building this. That's going to be on a totally different video, and I'll get that out as soon as I can. I'm going to shove that in a 180 casing. This is a 29. This is actually the old school. I got this off of eBay. It's a 2940 by 120. And I'm going to put... I've got the high power casing for it. This is a 180. Alright, and that's going to fit this. Hey, another tip. These... Your forward closure, your aft closure will not fit on the high power. The threads are different. It won't work. But we'll go through that a little bit more in depth on the engine build video. And that will see the light of day only if it's uh, if it works. If it don't blow up or Kato or uh, I do the O-rings wrong. But this is it. The Sumo's built. Not exactly uh, the greatest 100% immaculate. But hey, it's mine. And I'm glad that you guys have been here. I appreciate you guys watching. 
We have I have as of right now 123 subscribers. And that is actually amazing. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And with that, I'm Robbie D with Half Daft Rocketry. I'm signing off. And I'll see you next time.